All right, guys, Puppy's World here once again. I got a bunch of trailers going on the television um, in an actual digital feed. So um, we are operating out of the audio return channel, although it is better than the optical output that comes out from the TV and the receiver. So we're unable to get Atmos, though, through this connection. A fraction of what its potential But yeah. I want to show you something real quick as to why I'm doing this video. Okay. from the back to all the way in front marks overhead almost anywhere in between then you will feel every direction how does that sound? Alright folks, that was my little Atmos introduction for you. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. It's going to keep running in. Um, yes, please like and subscribe to my channel if you would. <laughs> um, but here, let me show you something real quick. The reason I've got the drill here is because I wanted to take the plunge and I've done this multiple times before. I've tried setting this stuff up in, in many different rooms and many different setups and I haven't actually calibrated it or gotten it to work yet and I need to do some stuff with the wiring yet. Um, as you can see I just ran some regular 16 gauge speaker wire, uh, just some regular you know, C3 in-wall uh, in rated uh, monster wire right there. Multiple things you can do though. You can paint the wire white, whatever color of your wall. You can get a wire mold, do so many different things. However, this is over the top. This, this is the next best thing uh, for surround sound. And if you are running Atmos or DTSX and you have not installed height channels yet, you are missing out. Honestly, I prefer now to watch movies in this room over any other movie theater or anywhere simply because the sound is amazing now with the height channels calibrated and set up properly just with these two believe it or not it's amazing um even ask the female i had her sit in here before i listened to some music with multiple different settings ran through and it's like whoa it's totally different now um never before have you noticed it and it really depends on the wall the ceiling, how you've got it set up, where the speakers are pointed, everything. So let me just kind of show you something really quickly. And, um, you know, I'm going to talk about the uh, height channels. So there are multiple different things you can do. Um, there's, there's kind of a trick that I've done, and I've played around with this so many different ways. Um, you know, mainly, you're going to get your receiver, right? You're going to open it up. You're going to set up your, your speakers. You're going to mount them on the wall, ceiling, whatever. You're going to put them in the proper height outputs of the receiver. You're going to put in a, you know, a Blu-ray, an Alter HD or something. You're, you're going to run your Dolby Atmos. You're going to be like, what the fuck? It doesn't sound that great. I'm not noticing, you know, that much sound coming out of those height channels. Or it doesn't sound like, you know, what it should. Where You know, if rain is 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 coming, you know in the movie and it's not sounding like it's coming from above dropping down uh, what the hell I'm not getting the full you know 360 effect like it promises well that's because you haven't set things up properly and I was wondering that myself I'm going you know for the last couple of months I'm going what the fuck man it's not this shit just isn't coming out you know the way it should be and um 
man, I did, man, did I know, uh, you know, I did not know. I'm so, you know, um, I screwed up. I, I was screwing up so many times and there's just, there's a few things I think that you got to know about the height channels. Um, I've talked about the in-ceiling speakers before, how they just don't match up to an enclosure type design speaker. Uh, they're nothing of the sort. So if you can hang or mount regular speakers up, Go ahead, all for you know. Please do that because that's going to give you a much better experience. This this is over the top. I mean, this is just crazy in here now. You're not going to hear it on uh, you know the YouTube right now, but um, you know I'm attempting to give you a try with all these little you know trailers. But um, I'll go ahead and turn this one guy up one last time, and it's insane. It's actually just totally different than this room has ever been. So totally different guys. Um, it, it's amazing. And let me give you some tips or tricks or some hints. So I am running something different right now than what the audio companies, so to speak, would suggest or recommend. Um, you know, you're always going to just plug it into your height channels. These are going to be rear height channels, but yeah, doing a little bit, doing things a little bit differently. Once you play around with your stuff, affect your channels, your levels, your delays, calibrations, and stuff like that, yeah, you might be unhappy. What I have done, let me show you real quick. Come on with me, and I will show you this. As you can see here, here is the height channels, the height ones. Height 2, well, height 2 is not going to any height channels. If you can guess, haha, you got it right. I'm using the surround back ports for the height channels right now because there is so little freaking content out in Atmos right now to the point where I'm just not going to switch those speaker terminals to the height channels the way they should be until I'm actually watching a 4K Blu-ray in Atmos or DTSX. I've got a few of them. i got a total of, of eight right now. i got a total of eight blu-rays that operate in atmos or dtsx so yeah that's just not you know i'm not watching all my content i can enjoy all content now with a full height surround effect and i you know i did the two other ones earlier and front i was or i'm sorry rear i was much happier with i'll do all four of them soon i'll do the wires height them all up and um we'll be we'll be really working we'll be cinema scaping here huh but let me introduce you the next best thing here in mounting speakers. As I said, you know, we are in the new age now where digital surround sound has changed and we're taken off into new heights of Atmos and object-based surround sound as opposed to object-orientated surround sound. So we're getting different. I'm even trying to work on some with some developers and patents pending, of course, into some situations where I'm creating floor speakers that are like this thin that sit, you know, in front of your couch, under your couch, behind your couch, all around. Um, you can operate a total of 16 of them, actually, and that's factored into the surround sound matrix and parameters to the point where you're actually uh, completely surrounded in surround sound. So hopefully I market that someday and can sell it. Yeah, I'd love to work with DTS as opposed to Dolby, to have DTS fire back to Dolby with something, but yeah, hopefully it'll take off. Patents pending, like I said. So I'm trying to work with some, you know, software developers and writers, you know, to see if that can ever happen. Uh, it's expensive, believe it or not, though. But um, let me introduce you to the sound path pivoting wall slash ceiling brackets from SVS. One of the best companies I would say for speakers. I had to try these guys out. I suggest you do as well. It's so simple. Let me tell you about this. So there's two different uh, type of bracketing systems that they come with. The long uh, pole here and the short pole. I suggest using the short pole um, as the long ones I have been successful with. And believe it or not, I'll even show you something really quick. I have ran my NHT Super Ones. Uh, hanging off the, not wall, 
ceiling, believe it or not. And yeah, they hung up. Um, I'll explain to you the quarter inch thread pattern and the 20 threads here. It goes right on into here. So if you just start turning this guy in, bam, we're already in. Look at that. I mean, that's a lot of weight this will support. This thing, I suggest you definitely, you know, screw them into the studs uh, to be secure, safe. And um, what I ended up doing at another property was actually setting up some, um, a two by four type of wood cut out. I'm sorry, not a two by four, actually a one by two that I had uh, secured to the wall and then bolts running that one by two into the wall studs and then this thing right into the one by two. So that was a little bit more effective I found. Um, if you're not getting into the studs, I wouldn't recommend this. However, this thing works perfectly. Like I said, it's got the two options there. Let me flip on some light for you really quickly though. So let's just take a look at what this includes. Okay, just opened um, a new, a brand new box up. I've got another set. These things have worked out beautifully. Sound path, pivoting wall slash ceiling bracket from SVS. Wall and ceiling mounting options compatible with the speaker keyhole brackets and quarter inch 20 threaded inserts maximum supported weight 7.7 .7 pounds i operated them at seven and a half pounds worked out wonderfully believe it or not so i don't know exactly how much you know i'd, I'd really trust them with but yeah like i said i operated my nht super ones which are pretty damn heavy uh so here's what's in the box guys this i can't remember what it ran me probably about 25 dollars uh available off the svs website but um here's the stuff that it comes with so it comes with everything you need, all the hardware, every <clears throat> mounting thing you need to do. Uh, it just doesn't come with the screws to actually screw it into the wall. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. So can't use bolts, obviously, as those holes are a little bit small. Um, I would trust bolts over screws. Like I said, I would use the smaller ones, but we've got two here to mount up some you know, speakers and go nuts. Anything else? I'm just in a mock setup right now with the damn uh, screws in the wall, hence the drill. So all I did was choose, let me show you really quickly actually. All I did was choose um, a specific size of drill, but a little bit smaller than the screw itself, of course, and then just thread the screw on into the wall and bam, we were good to go. What did I choose? I chose a 764 bit right there um, and then just ran a Phillips screw on into the wall. Not even a deep one either. And uh, we were good to go. So, you know, it really works out. You, you are totally missing out on surround sound if you are running Atmos or DTS-X and you have not done the height channels and calibrated them properly. But come with me really quickly and I will show you. Yeah, I got a mock set up right now. I got to switch the speaker wiring, order more wire and shit and whatnot. So I'll have that all done and looking good soon. But as I was telling you before, I have operated mine in the surround back port. So you're actually just hearing surround back audio out of those speakers. I've tried it, of course, out of the rear heights, front heights up here and all that. Nothing of the same, trust me, because then the receiver is actually sending the proper signal to those speakers and you hardly hear anything. Yeah, you could go into the channel levels and turn that up or go into each speaker output, you know, into the receiver and turn up the, you know, the level going to those height channels, but still you're not going to get that exact sound. Yes, when I'm watching actual Atmos or DTSX, of course I'm going to put them in the proper outputs and then work everything as it should be. Uh, but as you saw, we're not getting an active signal and hardly any um, feeds. There's very little content that has an active signal for uh, rear or front heights, believe it or not now. So I'm just operating them out of the second best thing that surrounds, that surround backs. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things are, are decoded now into 7.1, um, not even 7.2, as you see right there. Uh, so, you know, it, it really does give that effect, though. Um, like I said, I had a movie going where the, you know, where it was raining and the front ones honestly did sound like rain was coming down from the ceiling to the floor. It was amazing. Um, and this is just the, the next best thing. It really is, guys. Um, you've got to try this. I implore you, please do this. If you are running Atmos and you're not doing the high channels properly, too, you can just screw some, screw some speakers up into the wall or ceiling and you know say call it a day but it's not done until you've calibrated you've messed around with it you've changed things up you've rewired it and then you've sat back down 
calibrated your system once again with the microphone and all that, then gone to work. Um, so yeah, I've put a lot of hours into this, guys. It's worked out finally now for me, so I'm going to start getting to work, mounting other things up, wiring stuff up, and hiding wires and whatnot. So we'll be aesthetically pleasing at some point, but I just wanted to fill you in on this. So we're entering into new heights, literally. Um, and we'll go there. We'll go with SVS elevation speakers now that we have this said and done and completed. So just wanted to fill you in, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll be back with a ton more. Thank you.